Hello, guys, and welcome to Odson Serie A Match Day 30th uh, in the middle of the Champions League uh, quarterfinals. Very important, of course, because we have three Italian teams at the moment of recording this. Danny Inter with one foot in the semi finals, even. Yes, yes, 2 nil. unexpected. If you do check uh, the video we did about the Champions League, I mean, I had to hold up a count. You were hopeful, added... eh? I have to say. We were, we were, but I didn't expect Inter to have this such a strong transformation. They done the job, they done a perfect game, a defensive game without necessarily parking the bus, and they hit Benfica at the right time. They deserve to win. A uh, job is half done, perhaps even more than half done. Tonight, uh, Milan, Napoli, and then next week, the return legs also mm-hmm. for the Conference League and for the Europa League. So, obviously, there is a lot at stake. Uh, this is going to be one of those match days in Serie A, I think, with a few question marks who's going to play, who's going to be available, etc. Good for betters, actually. You can go for surprises and win. Yes. It looks like the 90s or the early 2000s where the Italian teams uh, had a lot of money and the Serie A was the best uh, championship. Uh, well done by Italian team. So, Danny, let's start analyzing the match day 30th with uh, you and, of course, with everyone. Eh? Leave your tips, your comments, press the like, subscribe, tell us which one is your favorite Italian team. Or whatever you want, perhaps you are a big fan of Cremonese. And uh, perhaps Cremonese, Danny, now they have more fans after the crazy, amazing, unbelievable victory in Genova against Sampdoria in the very last minute. What what a goal scored by Sir Nicola. And now they are playing at home against Empoli. Perhaps it's a good moment also to get back-to-back victories for Cremonese. Well, it could for a team uh, that have never won away and they go and pick up three points in Genova from behind with two goals in the dying minutes of the of the game, condemning Sampdoria to relegation. And now uh, Cremonese are second from bottom. It is a team that, uh, despite everything that went on, they changed the manager, they hired Ballardini, uh, perhaps they didn't have the, expect- the, the effect they expected. They have to be praised because they are brave. They go forward. Often uh, they play with three uh, strikers. And Ballardini was really intelligent, changing the tactics halfway through the uh, Sampdoria game, switching from a back three to a back four. And it worked. But now, can Cremonese win back to back games? It's going to be difficult. But I think this is going to be an interesting game because Empoli, who got a miraculous draw at San Siro uh, thanks to their goalkeeper Perizan who looked as good as Viviano he made some amazing saves now Empoli are saved obviously and what do they got to play for pretty much uh, nothing Cremonese I mean they play for entertainment really Uh, the curious stats is that Empoli never won a game this season when they conceded so they only won uh, to nil and uh, yes if they do concede a goal it's not a team that managed to score more than two or three and win. So I think this could be a surprise result. I think this could be perhaps a double chance for Cremonese, but I'm expecting goals. There is no reason to believe this was going to be a cagey affair. So I'm going to go for over 2.25 goals, 186. If there are only two goals in the game, you lose half your stake. But, you know, there is an end-of-season feel in this game, and I think there could be three or four goals at the Stadio Zini. Mm, an important one also on Friday, or especially yes. is this one, Spezia Lazio, because Spezia, they are only four points away from relegation. Now Verona is in their back, even if they got a very good point in their team of Frankie against Fiorentina. And Lazio, Dani, perhaps they are now the best team in Serie A, three consecutive victories, and they played really well against Juventus. Best team in Serie A by far, and I think they're going to get better and better and more consistent because they play only one game per week. And I think that helps. Sarri has built a very good side. I think he's the best side in Serie A comparing the resources they have. They are second in the table. They don't have the second best squad in Italy by any stretch of imagination. Actually, people always thought Lazio are a very short squad, 12, 13 players. But, you know, playing well, 
pays off. Playing once a week obviously helps. And against Juventus, they could have scored three or four. Okay, maybe the first goal could have been disallowed. Maybe there was a push from Milinkovic Savic on Alexandro. But you know, the second one with a back heel from Luis Alberto to Zaccagni was a beauty. And now Lazio has everyone fit, no absentees. Immobile is fit again. Zaccagni, 10 goals, is the top Italian scorer in Serie A. Five assists, Immobile right behind, nine goals. Another goal for Milinkovic Savic wasn't scored uh, recently. Uh, and they are looking really, really good. They are second in the away standing, Lazio, by the way. They got the best away defense, only seven goals conceded, 17 clean sheet for Provedel. So and they travel to Spezia, who held their own at Firenze. Uh, I was expecting a low-scoring game, and in fact, it was a low-scoring game. Uh, Spezia perhaps took advantage of the fact that Fiorentina has played a lot of games recently. They couldn't uh, master the 10th consecutive win. But, you know, this Spezia side, despite having a draw, obviously the win of Verona puts a bit of pressure on them. I'm not expecting them to have another good result against a top side. It is a side that's going to spend a lot of time defending their own box. Dragoski, by the way, is the keeper who has faced the most shots so far in Serie A. I think Lazio are going to run away with it. are going to win this one and take advantage of some of the other teams in the top six. They're going to drop points for sure because they're playing in Europe this this week. They, they, mm. They're not all going to win. Um, Lazio, Asian Handicap minus 075, 198. That's my pick because if they win by one goal margin, you win half your stake. So you might want to even put two units in this one because I think Lazio strong favorites. If they win by more than a goal margin, it's good. You double your stake, 198. Good one. Seven points away. Lazio from Inter now in the fifth spot. You've always said, Danny, that uh, Sarri is very uncomfortable playing on Thursdays. Uh, and uh, you are completely right, actually, since they are out of uh, the European competitions. <laughs> They are cruising in the Serie A, or the opposite we can say about Milan, of course, with the two eyes in the Champions League. They are dropping points in Serie A, only one victory in the last five games and was against Napoli. So this one is a tough one, perhaps is one that people should look carefully and a good one for surprises because Bologna... They are now even dreaming about uh, playing in Europe then in next uh, w- uh, next season because they beat Atalanta and Udinese in the last two games. And they are minus five from Atalanta, beat them deservedly with two goals from Orsolini, eight goals and three assists so far for Orsolini. The bad news is that he's suspended, so he's not going to play this one. So they're going to be without him and without Arnautovic, a side Bologna that has been completely transformed by Thiago Motta. No wonder why some of the big clubs are thinking about him as the next manager next season, one above all Inter, unless Simone Inzaghi wins the Champions League. But, you know, Bologna have been really transformed in the last 20 games. They will be fifth in the table, of course, with a side that is nowhere near the uh, fifth best side in Serie A. They play well. And if you look at the possession stats of these two sides, they're very similar both averaging over 50%, with Thiago Motta, Bologna being able to keep the ball much, much better. Now, Milan, they play against Napoli on Wednesday, the day we're recording. I think they have a massive chance to go through, because Napoli are without Osimen, are without Simeone, probably without Raspadori. They need to change the way they're playing. Milan, with the first leg at home, to lay down a mark get maybe a small margin win and then play on the counter at the Maradona. What a great chance they have. And, you know, it is something that doesn't happen very often. So they're going to be obviously focused in the Champions League derby. And maybe Pioli will do again turnover. But we saw against Empoli when Pioli leaves out Leao, six assists, 10 goals. Giroud, eight goals and four assists from the starting lineup. Milan really struggled. In fact, they create the best chances in the second half against Empoli when those two were brought in. The Catelare, Origi, really. They haven't left a mark so far this season. 62% of Milan games have been both to score. They conceded few goals, especially early this season. Skorupski, the Bologna keeper, on the other hand, is the fifth for shots face in Serie A. So Bologna, good going forward, but you know, still aside that uh, because of the way they play, and because they haven't got one of the strongest defense in Serie A, they do concede few chances. I think this is, could be a draw. So if you want to go for a, for an Asian handicap, zero for Bologna or maybe a double chance. But I think it is unlikely this is going to be a draw, a nil-nil draw. 
I'm going to go for a both to score here, 205. So it could be a 1 1 draw, a 2 2 draw. But yes, Bologna on the Asian handicap plus 0.5, I think is very good. Good options to back uh, Bologna in this one. Next game is Napoli Verona. Napoli, we are always backing them, even if they are in the middle of the Champions League uh, fixtures, because this season. They've been uh, very reliable in Serie A, yes. even when they are playing Champions League. They beat Lecce in the previous weekend. And also, Danny, in this uh, game, they are playing against Verona. Now the salvation is closer, only four points away. But they are the worst team in Serie A playing away. Only five points and no victories. Yes, and uh, only 38% of Verona games have been over 2.5 goals. To go to the Maradona and win, you need to score at least a couple of goals, unless you're a top side, unless you're Lazio, who've been perfectly tactically. But for Verona to go there, not to concede the win 1-0 or 2-0, I really can't see it. So where are the goals going to come from? I mean, unless it was for a Massive mistake by Consigli, who uh, left the goal open and Guy each scored from the halfway line. Verona were settling for a point against Sassuolo. Sassuolo kind of threw it away in the end. But great win for them. Um, they don't attack much, Verona. Also because they are without some of their attacking players. They might be without Juric. They might be without Lazovic for assist and three, go and three goals. Veloso, Magnani suspended. On average, Verona take three shots on target per game. Only Lecce is worse, and Napoli kept 13 clean sheets so far this season. I know the last two games they haven't, but I think they will go back to uh, their usual self. Of course, a huge game midweek for uh, Napoli. We talked about the absentees. Uh, Spalletti might be forced to make a few uh, changes, a little bit of turnover, maybe a little bit of rest for Cavascelia, especially if Osimen, Simeone uh, and Raspadori are not available. Don Belè is suspended for this one. So there could be a little bit of fatigue. I think, obviously, playing back-to-back -back Champions League games is going to affect them. But is it going to affect Napoli to the point that they're going to drop points at home against Verona? I think Napoli are going to win and they're going to win fairly comfortably in a low-scoring game. So Napoli win and under 3.5 goals. That pays too. Remember, they're going to be without the top scorer, Osimen, without Simeone, probably without Raspadori. You have to look for a low-scoring game. But, you know, when I say under 3.5 goals, Napoli win 3-0, which is a very large win, which is a comfortable win. Steep pays too. Well, we've been learning something this season is that uh, Napoli, they are very reliable and it's not a good idea betting against them. Uh, is a better idea bet against uh, Inter, for instance, yes. uh, in Serie A. <laughs> No victories in the last uh, four. And, of course, uh, they drew with Salernitana. Uh, they really deserve to win. They misfire a lot. But the morale has to be really, really high. Danny, after that victory in Lisbon that uh, really few people expected. Uh, massive, of course. The eyes are now in the reverse fixture against uh, Benfica. In the meantime, they have to play against Monza, perhaps Galliani, perhaps Berlusconi are also looking forward to get some points from the rival. And they got got a point in the end, uh, the last minute, when they drew 1-1 mm. uh, at the we goal from Caldirola, the former Inter, Inter player. 2-2, no? 2-2, sorry, 2-2 yeah, mm. in the reverse fixture in January. That's one of the many points that Inter squandered uh, this season. One thing is uh, certain for Inter that nothing is certain. It's all about emotions. It's the roller coaster emotion. It's a team that goes with the flow a lot, so a lot of instability, because otherwise you wouldn't be able to explain such a great performance in the Dalus, where they played the perfect game. They were defensive without parking the bus. They were focused without um, um, basically giving up the ball too, much, too many times. They attacked in the right moments. They knew how to pick the, the passes and also exploited the wide spaces, you know, the wing backs and Bastoni pushing on as well were really, really important. So Inter exploited the weaknesses of uh, Benfica on the wide sides. But I think that sort of game suits Inter a lot when they are not expected to have the ball. They are not expected to... Uh, to go on the attack all the time because the way they moved the ball recently has been very slow, very sluggish. So if they can actually leave the ball to the opposition and break, I think they're going to be more um, uh, 
uh, more successful. But unfortunately for them in, in Serie A, because they are one of the best teams, they're always expected to have the ball. They're always expected to attack. And that's where they find they find it difficult with, with, with teams that defend low. However, in the last two games in Serie A against Fiorentina and Salernitana, they should have scored more than a goal overall. They should have scored at least three or four. So they've been a little bit unlucky. Uh, this is... Curiously, Inter is the team that takes more shots per game in Serie A, but they score 18 goals less than Napoli. So there is also a confidence issue uh, there. Um, I think this is going to be tricky for Inter because the job is not done against Benfica. Benfica is capable of scoring the first goal at San Siro. I think Inzaghi, who is in peril still, uh, will make few changes, will make few rotations. And I think also the fact that Inter are missing Chalanoglu in a game like this is going to be big. chalanoglu has got five assists, two goals, created 40 chances in a game against a side that probably is going to sit a little bit deeper. It's going to be difficult. But then Monza, on the other hand, have been uh, surprisingly good uh, this season. They are fourth for possession in uh, Serie A, also fourth for shorts faced. So they do attack, but they do leave uh, gaps at the back. The two wingbacks are the best players of Monza. Carlos Augusto, five goals, five assists. Churria, five assists, four goals. They're going to push on, and they got one of the best midfielders in Serie A, Nicolo uh, Robella, of course. Um, both to score here. 2 10. I think uh, if Inter wins, it's not a win to nil. They might have dropped points. Obviously, it's going to mm-hmm. cost a lot in the, in the race to, to the fourth place, but uh, uh, I can't trust Inter 100%. Both to score 2 10. Dangerous game for Inter. Yes. Let's jump into the games we have on Sunday. Let's. Sampdoria, key one, this one for relegation with Sampdoria, I guess uh, now they are hopeless, uh, that goal scored by Cremonese, or the two goals scored by Cremonese, were the nails in the coffin for Sampdoria, whereas Lecce Danny, be careful, eh? five points away from relegation, six uh, consecutive defeats Yeah, and they finally scored a goal after six games, that was the equaliser, momentaneous equaliser against Napoli, goal by Di Francesco, uh, they didn't play too badly, I think, against Napoli. A good uh, physical game uh, for them, which is the game that suits them. But in the end, a mistake by Vladimir Falcone, an on goal, and they lost uh, the game. Yes, they need to be careful. They cannot afford uh, to lose this one. Whereas Sampdoria, uh, you know, any logic uh, is over with them, any 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 rationale in terms of the number of points they could collect here and there. You know, they go Spezia next. So obviously if they avoid defeat here and they win against Spezia, they could still beat a little bit of hope. But really, for a side they're not able to beat Cremonese at home being up, going taking the lead twice. I don't know uh, really where the goals are going to come from, where the points are going to come from. Uh, these are the, in the bottom three for goals scored in Serie A. They average less than a goal uh, per game, and they're both low in confidence. But who who's going to benefit from a draw? Who's going to benefit for a nil-nil really here? Maybe just Lecce. But I can't really trust uh, Verona uh, at the moment. They might be, they might have a surge. Look, I'm going to go for over two goals because the book is expect a low scoring game. But I think at least it could be two goals. This is a good one to pass, probably. 185 over two goals. If there's only one, one or two nil, you get your money back. But this one is very, very difficult. Perhaps also is a good pass. The next one, Torino Salernitana. Yes. Salernitana, seven points away now from the relegation spots. Five consecutive draws, and there is always good money. If you go for a draw, and Torino, Danny, they are in the middle of nowhere. Uh, no one knows, no? Where are they heading? They had very tough opposition at home, losing to Roma and Napoli recently. What do you think about this Torino Salernitana? Torino is a side that plays well, but is really stingy in terms of goals, chances created. You know, he's the only side in Serie A never scored more than two goals uh, this season. And, you know, I think this is an issue against top sides who are always going to stick one in the back of your net. They do play well. They do play good stuff, as they did against Sassuolo, as they did uh, against Roma as well. But uh, I think they do lack the cutting edge. So it is a side that probably uh, will end up with more games drawn the one at the end of the season, whereas Salernitana against Inter, extremely lucky, is saved by Ochoa, who made a few good saves, but, you know, they signed a top goalkeeper who's keeping them up, after all, and that's uh, credit to them, and then the goal... But really Canada, good saves, eh? really, really good ones. It's amazing. amazing. It's amazing. I mean, the, the level they were. I mean, last year they didn't have a bad goalkeeper in Sepe, but the jump in class between Sepe and Ochoa 
been amazing. And you know, uh, since January, I think he has given them a given them at least six, seven, eight points, which is going to be the difference between staying up and going down. And I think it's a great achievement for Salernitana, uh, which uh, they're not playing badly, but you know, against Inter, they should have lost the goal from Candreva. He's across. He admitted it. He miskicked it. He went into the back of the net. Are they going to have the same luck at Torino? Maybe not. Maybe they might run out of luck, although recently managed to draw at San Siro against Milan. Look, it is very difficult, this one, because they play virtually for nothing. You need to maybe go for the strongest side and go for an Asian handicap of minus 0 0.25 for Torino in the first half, which pays 1.99. It's a very good, good odd. So if Torino takes the lead, they could hang on to it, win the first half, and you win. If they draw nil-nil the first half, you only lose half your stake. Big fan of Memo Choa. We've uh, been seeing him only in the World Cups. Now in Europe, we can enjoy him every single week uh, so he can play the next World Cup in his country. This is the goal for Memo Ochoa. And next game is Asuelo Juve with uh, Juventus four points away from Atalanta after the defeat against Lazio, still with hopes to play in Europe via uh, Serie A, but with an eye. Of course, in the tie against Sporting Lisbon, Danny and it's, uh, it's not easy to go to Sassuolo now. They lost to Verona, but they were having very good uh, results before that defeat in the Bentegodi. Yeah, especially the win against Milan, against uh, Roma. It is a side that has uh, rediscovered their swagger, uh, their uh, prowess of scoring goals, helped by some very interesting young players, L'Oriente, probably the revelation of Serie A this season, a second in Serie A for chances created, 54 chances created, six assists, seven goals. Against Verona, I think they throw themselves away a little bit, a little bit of the old mistakes of Sassuolo creeping in, uh, but Really, they didn't deserve uh, to lose against Torino. Was a decent draw. It's difficult to bet on the swallow because it's one of those sides that is very dangerous to face because they play for nothing and they're saved from January onwards. They're basically saved. But at the same time, when there is a team that plays for nothing and a team like Juventus that plays for the Champions League spots, you need to maybe think the motivation at this stage of the season play a part. Look, Juventus have been playing badly recently. They lost the little bit of uh, spark that they had recently. In the last few games against Inter and Lazio, they really were uninspiring. And also, the, the, the number of chances they've created, the quality of chances they've created is really, really poor. Now, they play sport in Lisbon. Go and check our video on the Europa League with Alvaro, of course, for my uh, insight or uh, my prediction on Juventus. I think they're going to struggle. Here, though, I'm going to go against uh, the logic. I'm going to go for a Juve win. Maybe an ugly win. Maybe a 1-0. Uh, but I think uh, they're going to pick a win here. Three points. Pays well. 202, really. And by the way, next week, we're going to know whether Juventus are going to get back the 15 points. I'm going to get back some points. I'm going to get no points at all. So this mm -hmm. is a massive week for Juve. For Serie A at all, if they win this one, plus the 15 points, they are second and they have guaranteed a Champions League spot. Mm -hmm. And talking about ugly wins, let's talk about yes. Mourinho, Roma. The, ma the master <laughs> of ugly wins. The master, the master, of course, the uh, against Torino, they scored a oh, penalty man. in the early minutes and then <laughs> got another clean sheet, the second in a row. Yeah, but uh, Roma, they've been dropping points this season after Europe and they have a massive game against uh, Feyenoord in the Europa League. Uh, after this game, they have Atalanta and Milan. So this is a crucial one because they are in the top four and this is the goal for Roma this season. And perhaps also, Dani, they want to have a vendetta. Remember, they were thrashed yes. by Udinese in the first part of the season. Now, Roma, at this stage of the season, I think they are slightly overachieving. Okay, I don't think they got the third best team in Serie A. They're doing better than last season helped by the fact that Juventus has been that point. They are in Champions League spot, but I think if they finish in the Champions League spot, I think they are overachieving, but they need to continue in this trajectory. Against Torino, as you mentioned, typical. Murignata, you know, 1-0, uh, ugly. 17 clean sheet for Rui Patricio this season. Eh? And I think in the last year and a half since Mourinho is in charge, they must have won at least 20 games, either 1-0 or 2-0. It's how you win games, despite of what Antonio Cassano says, that he thinks that Mourinho's football is rubbish. Mourinho had time to have a little bit of a row with him, but I think it's a completely irrelevant. This is how you win games sometimes, and I think that makes Roma one of the strong candidates to lift the Europa League trophy, I think. 
but it's going to be difficult against Feyenoord. Uh, they're going to make changes. Obviously, there's a back-to-back game. Um, and Udinese, on the other hand, uh, is a, one of those teams that, you know, seem to have regained a little bit of form, uh, seem to be physically better than what they used to be between uh, November and December. They do score more goals. They do concede goals. 55% of Udinese games have been over 2.5 goals. And surprisingly, Udinese and Roma have scored exactly the same number of goals, 39, which doesn't speak very well perhaps for Roma, but good for Udinese. Beto and Dybala are the both uh, players in double figures. But I think Udinese has lost a lot since the Ulofeo gone injured and he hasn't played because his replacement to a van hasn't provided anything. Isaac's success as a second striker is good as an assist, six assists, but he doesn't score. He cannot score. So really, that's where the goals have dried up. But Udinese, I think, are uh, going to take the game on to Roma. Uh, really. Over 2.25 goals. I know this again. is a, you say, a Mourinho game. It should only be two goals, one goal. I mean, mm. Udinese might score one at least at, at the Olympic, and then Roma needs to come out attacking a little bit more. Over 2.25 goals, because the odds are very good, too. So, which means if there are only two goals, you lose half your stake. Well, we saw a goal feast against Sassuolo. Perhaps it's a similar yeah, game. So. Who knows? And on Monday, we have a good one. Fiorentina, Atalanta for the European spot, with Fiorentina also involved in the conference and drop points against Spezia. That was a surprising result after five consecutive victories in Serie A. And Atalanta, that is a hit and miss. Eh? Of course, they beat Cremonese and Empoli before, but the defeat against Bologna, perhaps they are not uh, getting European spots this season, after all. Conference League, probably Conference League, I mm. think. But which I think it suits them, in a way. This was a rebuild year for Gasperini. Uh, he changed a few personnel. Probably going to be more changes in the summer. And, you know, playing the Champions League straight away probably would not be... Would not be great for them. And I think it has to be gradual. And uh, yes, they always have the same problems. This, I think it's a mentality problem as well. When they have the match ball, when they have an important game to win, especially at home, in the last two, three seasons, they often miss that opportunity. And I guess Bologna, they were deservedly uh, defeated. Now, they got the advantage that they don't play midweek. And Fiorentina uh, goes to Poznan to play in the um, Conference League, which they have a great chance to to win, I think, Fiorentina. Fiorentina is a side that's really playing well. Uh, don't take too much into account the 1-1 draw against um, Cremonese. They've been playing a lot of games recently. They will play up to nine games in April. So they could be... A f- they could not be all be wins, you know. After all, Fiorentina won nine games in a row and then a draw. Uh, the only concern I got about Fiorentina is that despite creating a lot of chances, taking a lot of corners, I think they're top for corners uh, taken in Serie A, uh, third for shots, etc. They only had the 12 attack of Serie A, 34 goals scored. You know, we talk about Roma scoring 39, a poor tally, but Fiorentina five goals less. And if you look at the top scorers in Serie A for Fiorentina, Cabral got six goals, then there's Jovic with four goals. Now, Jovic is injured, so it's going to be uh, Cabral, but, you know, Nico Gonzalez hasn't scored many, Barak hasn't scored many either. Yeah, the, the midfielders have contributed a bit, but you were expecting a little bit more from Fiorentina, but they do play well, I think. Um, it could be an interesting game, I think. Uh, there, could be, there could be goals. I'm going to go for over one goals in the first half, 188. If he finishes only one nil each way, you get your money back. Well, good game to finish this uh, match day in between European ties in the Italian football in Serie A. Dani, tell me which one is your favorite bet? The Friday game, Spezia Lazio over 1.5 goals that pays 1.4. Mm, okay, also going for Lazio is good one, eh? 1.79 if you trust uh, Saris men and Yoraka. Cremonese Empoli over 1.5 goals. Bologna Milan over 1.5 goals. Inter Monza over 2.5 goals. And Juventus not to lose a Sassuolo, so X2 Sassuolo Juventus. The total odds are 483. A lot of goals. We usually see a lot of goals in Serie A. It's been great, Danny, to analyze again with you the video. See you next week. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Don't forget, press ciao. the like, subscribe, and arrivederci. Ciao, ciao.